Oh, so you want to go skating? Hi, baby. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to be taking you along to work with me. I usually only vlog on days where I'm traveling or doing something special, but I never vlog my day-to-day -day life. And every day, I work with my dad. We own a skateboard company called Street Plant. We started it at the beginning of 2015, so we've had it for four and a half years now, going on five, and it has just been so much fun being able to work with my dad. We run it out of my parents' garage, and if you guys didn't already know, my dad has been a professional skateboarder for over 30 years and he has skated for some of the biggest companies such as Pal Peralta, Black Label, Element, many more. And because of that, I've been able to live a really fun and exciting life. I had the opportunity to travel from a very young age and I'm just so grateful for all of those opportunities. But anyways, I feel like this side of my life, my work life, is something I don't really show here on YouTube too often, so I am very excited for you guys to get to know my dad and get to see what I do on a day-to-day -day basis at Street Plant. Oh, so you want to take a tour of Garage Land? Live Bentley skate. No, I think he wants to skate. Alright, this is Garage Land. This is Bentley. Now we just put out a new product line called the Let's Go 2019 line. And, uh, it features art by Yusuke Tsuge. This is the Samurai headboard. And uh, also part of that line is the Let's Go board. So we're really stoked on these boards. Uh, really stoked to work on the USK again on graphics. It's one of our uh, real inspirations here in Garage Land. This is Lewis. Hey. Lewis, tell the good folks what you do here at Street Plant. I do uh, all the social media uh, for both the Instagram accounts for Street Plant Italian and Street Plant Brand Instagram account. Yeah, but more than that, <laughs> you are the Stoke Master General. I got it. <laughs> this is a real special collaboration we did with Bruce Lee family. Uh, we did a series of boards with them. Uh, this one's my personal favorite uh, with the Bruce Lee quote, under the sky, under the heavens, there is but one family. It's uh, really just a really great board, art by Greg Higgins. I still can't believe this happened. It's amazing. <laughs> Bruce Lee. Another collaboration that we have is with the Garcia family for uh, Jerry Garcia skateboards. And that's been a really, really great series that we've done. Um, Garcia signature, Garcia handprint on the tops of all the boards. And this is the uh, Rosebud board. And this is one of the funner boards we've done, the antidepressant. On our shape, the shape is called the Street Axe. It's our all-terrain fun machine. Uh, this is our this is the main street plant logo that we use. This is art by Greg Higgins as well. And uh, this really captures the spirit of what street plant's all about. A commitment, a dedication, and a love for skateboarding. 100 percent independent skateboarding. This is the antidepressant, so better than pharmaceuticals, as Officer Craig Kanami says. Over here, this is Rob Wallace. Going on. Rob, you wanna um, introduce yourself. What I do, do uh, graphics, photography, I guess a lot of creative stuff and just make most of the stuff that everyone sees. Yes. Uh, Rob is our go-to for all things creative here at Street Plant. So this is my most recent colorway of my Pal Peralta reissue board. And this is the color I chose, this uh, army green. 
So I'm pretty excited about that. All boards that leave Garage Land, leave Garage Land with love. So um, either myself or Emily, you, <laughs> will write love on each board. And then uh, every order, every board ship, it comes with a bunch of stickers and a handwritten card. This is for Daniel and Catherine. Much love from Garage Land. Thanks for your support. Skate Create, enjoy. So that's kind of, you know, every order. You know, because you can have, you could, you could just have your boards arrive and shrink wrap and just move them from one shelf into a box. But for us, it's, it, it's far, far more meaningful to actually get our hands on the boards put some good energy into them by writing love on them and that just feels like a better way to send the skateboard out into the world and also every box those are our boxes over there we stamp arigato on it which is thank you in japanese I ate Del Taco in my last video. It's kind of <laughs> embarrassing. And this is all we eat here. <laughs> this is what fuels fruit plant. <laughs> what the heck? How did this happen? I don't know. <laughs> I listened to the use like once and then this just happened. <laughs> yes! Oh. Dude, I know you played an underwear. Come on, so like. This means it's really color. <laughs> we asked you guys on Instagram to ask us some street plant related questions. So right now, Lewis is going to read them off to us and we're gonna answer them. All right, guys, I got a question from Dave Martinez. Dave asks us, uh, what's it like growing, growing up with a famous dad? Did your friends ask for autographs and stuff like that? Yeah, it was really uh, exciting. Uh, my dad was... <laughs> <laughs> So I actually have a pretty funny story. When I was in either the third or fourth grade, I was getting out of school and I, I must have been getting out of class late for some reason. I walked outside, I just see <laughs> this swarm of kids and I was like, what's going on? And so I'm just trying to see what they're all looking at and I realize it's a line. I get to the front of the line, my principal was standing with his arms crossed like a bodyguard next to my dad. And I was like, oh my god, people are in line to get his autograph. So I went to the front, and the principal was like, back of the line. <laughs> but that was probably like the funniest thing that ever happened. But yeah, like people got autographs for their brothers and dads and stuff. Yeah, I went to, I went to her school to pick her up that day, and uh, I don't know if it was like the Tony Hawk video games were It must out. have been I the video games. I don't know what it was. ESPN, Tony Hawk tour or something, but... Uh, yeah, I, I got swarmed by all these kids, and then the principal came out and made them get into a line. And yeah, and then when Emily came up to, to to me to like say, "Oh, hey, Dad," he started telling her, "You no, what are you trying? You can't cut. You gotta get to the back of the line." I was like, "Easy, easy, buddy." Like you know, it was good old Mr. Malcolm. Yeah, it was pretty bizarre. Pretty bizarre. Hey guys, a couple people asked, "What are your favorite graphics?" Like street, board graphics. Street plant graphics. Yeah. Um, I think my favorite, at least recently, is the Crab Scrambly four year anniversary Adams Family deck, but it's our family, the Valley family. Um, but yeah, that's probably my favorite that we've done in the last year or so. Uh, so hard to say. I couldn't say a favorite. Uh, every, every artist has brought so much to Street Plant. Um, I mean, really, every time we release a new board, it's my favorite. It's a new favorite. Yeah, because, I mean, that's. We're not just making skateboards to make them. You know, there has to be a reason for it. There has to be a story, and it's uh, you know, it's every artist we work with is it's very meaningful. So I would I couldn't I couldn't break it down to one. Um, we just put out our Let's Go line, and that's art by Yusuke Tsuge. 
he's an incredible artist and an inspiration to us. Uh, a real big part of Street Plant. Um, but again, that's just one artist and one line of boards. Uh, all of them have been very meaningful. I just really couldn't, really couldn't say one over any other. All right, I have a question from Good Fortune Press. What is the most fulfilling part of your day-to-day -day at Street Plant? I think, for me, the most fulfilling part of the day is when you're packing an order and you, you know, we, what we do is we, a lot of times, or all times, we include a handwritten note. So, when you start to write that note and you get the person's name and you write their name, you say two or whatever it is, and uh, the realization that this package is leaving our house and going to someone else's house. Um, that's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing we get to do that every day. That we have people that are, you know, buying skateboards and, and skateboard accessories from us purposefully, meaningfully, you know, it's like they have to go a little bit out of their way to get to us, you know? And the fact that they take the time, spend the money, make the effort with us, it's, uh, yeah, so when you're processing an order and you get to that, that part of the process, you know, you feel that connection and that's probably the most fulfilling part of it. Um, for me, I think just being able to see my family every day because people my age don't really get that opportunity. So being able to work with my dad and then also with my mom on our antique booth, just that's really fulfilling to be able to work with family. All right, serious question here. Who's really the boss at Street Plant? No, Dad, stop. That's cheesy. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got Vinyl Geeky Chick on Instagram. She's asking Emily, did your dad ever teach you to skate as a kid? No, he didn't, but that's because I never had an interest. I danced growing up, and I just, I don't know. I never wanted to skate. I saw him get hurt a lot. They always had broken bones and always like had bandages from bleeding and stuff. So that definitely made me not want to do it. Such a disappointment, <laughs> you know. I really just wanted my kids to follow in my footsteps, become pro skaters or something. You know, it, that's that's insane. Uh, we, my wife and I, always just encourage our kids to find their own way and you know be themselves and. I always figured the skateboards were here. They were out in the garage or something, and if if either Emily or Lucy was inter was interested in skateboarding, they'd go out in the garage and grab the board and start figuring it out. I never felt the need to like uh, force it on the kids or say, "Oh, you should really check this out. It's so hardcore and cool." <laughs> you know, it's like no. Our main our main thing was like be yourself find your thing, you know, and we'll support that. All right, I got a question from our favorite officer, Officer Craig Hanaumi. He, uh, he wants to know, for Emily, when in your life did you realize how much of an influence your dad was to skating? Um, I guess, I guess after I graduated high school, I kind of started piecing together my dad's career and past, because I had never really known too much about it before then um just that he skated and like i knew his friends and the companies he skated for and stuff like that and i traveled with him but i didn't really know his like past in the 80s and stuff and when i graduated high school we were way back way back in the 80s <laughs> before i was born so when i graduated high school we started working on a few different projects together um kind of like cataloging his career and um that's kind of how Street Plant was started. Yeah, that's kind of that's really how Street Plant got started. Was she started digging around in some of my stuff, and said, "Oh, these old pictures are really cool. We should post them on Instagram." And that was really before there was any kind of like throwback or retro movement on Instagram. It was all mm -hmm. just like, "I just ate this." Yeah, what you were doing. At <laughs> you the know, moment. every post was, "I just ate this," and then she started posting pictures of me uh, early on in skating, 80, mostly 80s stuff, and uh, people really started like kind of uh, 
checking that out and liking it and showing good energy towards it. And that kind of was the out, that was the actual real birth of Street Plant. Yeah, Street Plant kind of started as like a t-shirt company and an Instagram account. Yeah, it was really an Instagram account, then became a t-shirt company, and then, well, it was a t-shirt company, but we were like only kind of semi-serious about it. It was yeah, just something was we were doing for fun. Thing. And then um, when we decided to do skateboards, that's when it really became what, what it, it is. is yeah. yeah. Yeah, we just, uh, you know, I just kind of left my career or pro skating at the front door when I walked in the house. You know, I just left it out on the porch. It wasn't something brought into the house or, <laughs> you know, I maybe I maybe made you watch Animal Chin once. Like here, here I if don't you, even know if I did. If that. you watch this <laughs> video, you might understand me better. But it wasn't even that important. You know, um, I just skateboarding's my thing. You know, also, I think when you're a kid, you don't really have concept of time or like time before you were oh, no. alive. No, the, you can you can definitely uh, you know drill drill information into your kids if you want to. Yeah. I never wanted to do that. It was never about that. Our time together as a family was our time together as a family. It was not about skateboarding or not about what I do for a living or what my my passions are outside of our family unit. It was about our family and yeah so I always thought like you don't need <laughs> this that's, that wasn't important information you know yeah. that's just how I always felt about it all right got a question from our friend Robert Serafin what has been your biggest takeaway in life since your journey started with street plant uh, for me the biggest takeaway is the realization that we are not alone when we started this company, we were so scared. We, you know, went out with our values first and our belief, more of a philosophical approach to running a skateboard company where I felt most of the industry had become just supply and demand. I said, we have to do something that's true to who we are and what our values are. And that was scary, you know, because we didn't know if there was an audience out there for that or we didn't think a single board was going to sell. Yeah, we we we, <laughs> the we first one out. Yeah, we were just like but but I didn't there was no other way to do it. Any other approach would have been dishonest and not true to who we are. And so I said this is how we have to do it. This is who we are. This is what's true to us. And it was scary. And the most amazing thing happened. We found out we were not alone. Um, and that has that changed our lives. That changed our lives. That's that's the uh, that's the energy that that keeps Street Plant going day in and day out, and it's it's amazing, and we're we're truly thankful and truly blessed by it. Um, kind of the same thing. My takeaway is just that there's so many kind people out there that we would have never met had we not started Street Plant. There's like we said earlier, so many artists we've worked with that have just changed our lives, really, and also our customers who we call the Street Plant Battalion. They have just been so nice to us and supported us from day one. And yeah, there's not even really, really a, there's fun. really not even a good word. We don't know what the words are. Like, it's like, it's better to just say the, the Street Plant Battalion, like, uh, customers. Yeah, that makes it sound like yeah, you have to just, buy something, yeah. but there's so many There are friends, support. there are, there are, there are, you know, people, people say fans, no, yeah, it's no, like, you know, it's nice. customers, oh, it's just like, we don't know what the words are, but we know that we're truly appreciative and truly thankful for these people in our lives. All right, guys, thank you so much for following along on this day in Garage Land with my dad. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do you have anything to add? Thank you. Thanks.